In this episode, we talk all about the law of attraction and how to allow the things into your life that you truly desire with author Susan Young. Let's get started. You're listening to the Think Outside the Lines podcast. Practical solutions and ideas for designing the life you want with an added dose of inspiration. And now, here's your host, Sean Feeney. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Think Outside the Lines podcast. I'm Sean, and you can find me over at my website, thinkoutsidethelines.com, where I help people discover and live their passion. I believe you deserve to live the life you want, and I want to help you design it. And my guest today is a former corporate lawyer turned author and life coach. Her focus is on the law of attraction and helping her clients to create a new mindset to achieve their goals. She believes that the majority of people in our world still aren't aware of or don't accept the concept that we are creating our realities with our own thoughts. Our conversation is full of inspiration and tools to help you better engage with the law of attraction. It's time to think outside the lines with Susan Young. All right, I want to say Susan Young, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks, Sean. Um, It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you on today. Now, I always start my interviews with some little icebreaker questions, kind of helps the audience get to know you a bit. Are you Mm -hmm. ready? I am ready. All right. What three words would you use to describe yourself? Hmm. Uh, creative, dedicated, and uh, it's not a word, but I'd say I have a, a great sense of humor. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, what's your greatest desire in life at the moment? Uh, right now, I am all in on expanding my business and the reach of my book and my coaching. And uh, not only for the, the feeling of productivity and uh, accomplishment, but I feel it is going to have a huge effect in the world, and it already is. I'm helping a lot of people, so that that is my uh, biggest desire right now. Awesome. I'm excited to talk more about that. Uh, what, what's your favorite place you've ever traveled to? Oh, wow. That's hard. I have done a lot of traveling. Um, I love Italy. I loved Bali. Um I'm going to have to say, oh, I love Hong Kong. I'm going to say Hong Kong. Nice. nice love it. Nice. I love uh, the energy of that place. Yeah. I've never yeah. been there. I actually hear that about Hong Kong. Yes. I haven't been back since uh, things have changed over there politically, but yeah. and but that, that would be interesting to see now. But I, I understand it's still very high energy. Very cool. Tell me about someone that you admire. Someone that I admire. I admire Oprah not only for her, uh, the obstacles she's overcome and the empire she's built, but what she does with that, the the way she reaches out into the world and uplifts others. And she constantly is setting an example for other people. So I'd have to say, I'd have to say she's one of the people I I most admire. Cool. We're going to actually, um, get along just fine because I love Oprah too. Um, I actually have a Oprah quote I want to run by you later because I'm kind of excited about that. So cool. Um, tell me about something great that's happened to you in the last week. In the last week, um, gosh, I manifested by using one of the tools from my book, uh, creating two to three new client relationships that are all happening now. And uh, I had been kind of busy with um, doing some editing and some other things. And I was thinking, you know, I haven't really focused on on the coaching. And um, I'd like to, to bring in some new clients before the end of the year. That would be nice. I love working with individual people um, as well, you know, as, as well as the writing. And uh, I sat down and wrote about it. I wrote about uh, what a good coach I am, what I bring to the table, how fun it is to help people. And it got three people inquiring within a couple of days. So it's an example of the power of the law of attraction, which is, is the basis for my book and my work. So that, that was pretty cool. Nice, nice. Now, speaking of books, um, mm-hmm. you can rec- you can recommend one book that will change someone's life. What is it? Well, I'd like to recommend my book, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I had <have laughs> a, a feeling you were going to say have that. Told me that. A lot of people have told me that it has been absolutely life changing. So um, I'll throw that out there. But I guess uh, crazily, uh, you know, um, I'm sure you're familiar with Wayne Dyer. Absolutely. And I've read a tons of his books. I haven't read any recently, but when I first got started on this, this journey, uh, that was, uh, 
he was a source of a lot of inspiration for me, but the book that really changed my life, and it was way back when I was in college, actually, and I just, I knew nothing about this, was uh, called Your Erroneous Sons by Wayne Dyer. It was like the first book that he wrote that was a, a bestseller. And it, I believe the premise at the time was, you know, it's not, you, you should never feel doubt about yourself or your worthiness. Look look outside you, it's, it's, it's other people and their perceptions and you should never let that affect you. And that was a really powerful thing to learn in college Yeah, and uh, had a huge effect on me. I also was very much affected by Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which yes. I read way before I, I learned about law of attraction. Absolutely. Yeah. The two of, um, it's funny cause I love Wayne Dyer. That's actually one of his books that I've never read. Um, and I was listening to another podcast recently where they replayed an interview that they had done with him obviously before he passed. And, mm-hmm. Um, he talked about really that book and it's really the basis for all of his work. And so I've been inspired since then to go back and read it and you've kind of reignited that. So Uh, interesting. I'm I'm sorry, as as you were saying that I was thinking I should go back and reread it now and see how um, it affects me compared to the, you know, 18 year old self that was reading that book. Yeah. And I don't know what, what possessed me to pick up that book at that age. I, you know, but it's interesting. It's funny that you say that too, because um, Think and Grow Rich was actually presented to me. I had a piano teacher when I was growing up that was probably more of like a metaphysical teacher than a piano teacher. She was just this amazing human being. And she recommended Think and Grow Rich to me at like age 13. Oh, that's so cool. And well, it was cool, but at the time, it, nothing resonated. I didn't get it. Like, and it's so funny because it, it, that book has come into my life, obviously not accidentally, several times over mm-hmm. the years. And, um, the time I read it as an adult, it was so weird because I was able to reflect on like, this is why she wanted me to read that. Like, it's so, oh, it's so wow. crazy. Yeah, it was really, really powerful. Interesting, because uh, talking about that has made me realize I was a little bit remiss and not mentioning, you know, because you asked me for one book and I, you know, it's hard to do that when you're someone who's such a reader and writer. Totally. But um, what you reminded me of is that uh, the book that powerfully affected me, and I wrote about this in my book, and I, I won't go into too much detail, but is the um, the book Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Oh, I've heard of and, that. Yes. Oh, you you must read that. And yes. I, um, my daughter, I think she was about, gosh, she was probably about 10 years old and just a precocious reader. And I thought she can read this. I, I, it, and it's very, very esoteric and talks about how we create thought forms with our, our minds and how they go out and create our lives. And that was way before I, you know, became, read that be, way before I was exposed to Abraham Hicks or the law of attraction. And um, my daughter, would, you know, she was given that information at age 10 or whatever. It reminds me of what you're saying about your piano teacher and getting that at an early age and having that sort of be a background influence on you that you're not even consciously aware of. So yeah, Absolutely. that that book is, is incredible. And it was life changing for me to read that book. I should definitely throw that out there. Awesome. Yeah, I asked that question because it's like first kind of selfish reasons. Like, yes, people suggest books I've read before, but sometimes they suggest ones I haven't. And so I'm just mm-hmm. like, yeah, something new. Oh, um, good. <laughs> all right, Susan, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. I, like I said, I'm really excited for everyone to meet you. Um, I think that your message is something I truly believe can help a lot of people listening today. So appreciate that. I'm going to let you tell us a bit about your background uh, and kind of what you believe the message that you were brought here to share with the world. Okay, my background is probably a little bit surprising, um, considering um, where I've ended up now and, and what my what I feel is my life pur- purpose and my passion. As I started out as a corporate lawyer, um, I went to Harvard Law School, got a job with a large law firm in Boston, and uh, that was my path for a while. And at some point, uh, I became exposed to these these teachings. Um, and I write about that a lot in my book. There was a, a, a true epiphany that I had where I realized, oh, we are creating all of this. But it was way before people started talking about law of attraction and before the secret and all of that. So I've known about this for a very long time. I mean, 15 to 20 years. Um, but I was not creating what I wanted, despite knowing that we are doing this all with the, with the thoughts we think and the way we feel about them. And it wasn't until I became exposed to the teachings of Abraham Hicks much later that I went, oh, my gosh, okay, now this makes so much sense. The only responsibility that we have in this process is the allowing part of the equation, which led me to write my book and and go into coaching because I realized people need help with that. So I don't know how much detail. um, I assume many people listening to this podcast may not know about uh, 
the the way the law of attraction works exactly or what yeah, the allowing you know part of the equation is? Yeah. And I'm actually kind of like, I'm excited by the idea that there will be people listening who are familiar with the law of attraction and people who aren't. I know mm-hmm. that it's obviously a really big topic to tackle in an hour long podcast. And we kind of talked yes. about that prior to the, all this. Yes. Um, I think my goal is to really just present the law of attraction and and how to allow in a new and refreshing way, right? And so yes. what I kind of want to cover is maybe some basic principles for someone that may be new to this concept, but then also mm-hmm. some tips and tricks for people who are aware of the concepts but really don't know how to implement them in their lives. Okay, So perfect. Yeah, yes. so like how I understand the law of attraction, and you can correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong on any of this, but okay. to put it like very simply, I feel like we've all woken up on the wrong side of the bed mm-hmm. um, and had a bad day that got progressively worse, right? And it's, yes. and it's because of the energy that we perpetuate the moment something goes wrong. Right. So my theory is that if you can acknowledge that that scenario has happened to you before and we've all created that, then, of course, the same could be true in reverse. Absolutely. And I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> OK. OK. And I, I love this, uh, I, the way you uh, suggested that I present this, because I feel like I'm straddling those two worlds all the time. I'm never sure if the people I'm, I'm speaking to are very law of attraction savvy or not. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through those things. And I can also recommend uh, more reading if people want to learn more about this. But the oh, basic idea behind uh, the, the law of attraction and, and learning how to create what you want in your life is that we're constantly asking for what we want and we don't actually have to say a prayer, uh, write it down, do anything other than think about it. We're, you know, we're, th- we're going through our day and it, it enters our mind that this particular situation could be a little bit better. Oh, I'd like to do it this way. Or I, this is what I would like. Or you see something and you think, oh, I like that. I'd like to have that in my life. That's all that you need to do. And immediately your preference is communicated to the universe, to your inner being. Uh, the second part of it is that as soon as you do that, the universe goes to work. And this seems unbelievable, but I've proven to myself that this is what happens and I have complete faith in this is that the universe goes ahead and and creates that particular thing that you want in amazing detail and probably having certain aspects that you didn't even think of when you you sent that desire out into the world because it knows so much more about what who you really are and what you want in every aspect of it that you're not actually thinking of at the moment so that to me is incredibly profound comforting, makes life feel like it could be so much easier to know that the universe is constantly working for you. And then the step three of the process, and this is really the only thing that we have to do or would want to do if we want to create life the way that we want it to create more deliberately, is to line up our vibration with the vibration of the thing that we want. And by that, I mean our our moods, our expectations, just how we're feeling in the moment needs to be on the same bandwidth as the thing that we desire, which is generally going to be pretty high up there on the emotional scale as compared to, you know, the, the lower feelings of uh, angst or overwhelmment or frustration. They are not a match to the desire that you want. So our work is to constantly sort of be tweaking and finding ways that we can get ourselves into thinking better feeling thoughts that are going to be a match to the things that we really want. And people have talked also about a a step four in this process. And I think um, I absolutely think that exists and that's uh, where I am right now. And I think, uh, you know, how I work with my clients is that um, when you get to the point that you really understand how this works and you have the ability to think thoughts on purpose rather than letting your thoughts control you, then you begin visualizing deliberately and you become more aware of your mood and your vibration takes a little dip, you become aware of it, and you make a little bit of an effort to find a thought that feels a little bit better, and then a little bit better, and then a little bit better. So you, you're making a decision to raise your vibe because you choose to and you can do it. So I, I also refer to this in my book as kind of entering the field of appreciation. It's sort of this moving into this place where you're aware of all of this happening, and you're appreciating the fact that you can work with it. So The major premise and what led me to write this book uh, was that I felt that there are so many processes out there and there's so so many people talking about these things that what was happening for me is that I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not doing enough. Um, I should be, I should be creating a visualization board, uh, uh, 
I should be, doesn't Oprah say, uh, have a gratitude journal and doesn't she do that every night when she goes to sleep, uh, you know, express 10 things she's grateful before you just yeah. start all these things are running from my, through your mind I haven't done enough you know um totally I can't yeah yes. <laughs> I can't possibly be a great creator because look what I did and also um in in my case and I think in almost everyone I've talked to it's this feeling like oh gosh I you know I was in the zone part of the day today but there were so many hours that I was frustrated or I was uh thinking about this problem that I'm having and how to solve it so there's no way I can actually be creating the million dollars that I want or the best selling book that I want or the perfect, you know, podcast that's going to go out and change the world because I had there was all this negative stuff going on today. But what I the message that I wanted to get out to people is we're making it a lot harder than it needs to be. Yes. Positive yes, positive energy is, is exponentially more powerful than negative energy. And you don't have to make up for twenty years of negative thinking with twenty years of more positive focus. It's not like that you can turn things around so rapidly. And I think that's something I'd like, you know, talking about the new things that I've learned since I wrote my book and how things have evolved for me is I've realized it's a, it's far easier than, than we've been making it out to be. And I've seen now that I can change my way of thinking about a particular subject and literally in 10 minutes see a result from that. And it's like, oh my God, that did that just happen? It's such powerful evidence. So let's talk about that for a second, because yes. I, I'm definitely like everything that you're saying, I'm super aligned with, right? And mm -hmm. I'm someone, I know what I want, I know how to ask for it. And I know how to actually like believe and try to, you know, I emphasis on the word, try to receive it. Mm -hmm. But then I find that sometimes the doubts come up or the blocks and yes. I catch like a glimpse of what I want, but then I feel like, oh, there's just like energy preventing it. So yes. what can we do when that happens? Okay. Well, one thing I was, I was thinking about the Sean when I, you know, was looking at some of the things we might be discussing and talking about uh, blocks. Absolutely. Those occur. And I like to take a little bit of energy away from blocks by not calling them blocks because it, it blocks just sound, it sounds huge, doesn't it? Yes. Like I'm, I'm blocked. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm blocked. Totally. Um, so that's, a, and most of the people that approach me for coaching or, or people I even just correspond with on Facebook or whatever, everyone feels stuck. And we're, we're just all the, the being stuckness, as you might want to call it, is related to just having a pattern that has developed over a period of time of having certain negative thoughts around a particular subject. When you think of it that way, it takes a lot of the um, energy away from the so-called block. It's really like these are some thoughts that I've had and I've developed a pattern of thinking about them or about this particular subject in that way. And I can change that. I mean, what, what's the big deal? So do you believe that it's that simple? Because I think there's a lot of there's a school of thought that comes from like, well, it's deeply ingrained within us from like childhood or traumatic experience. And so I'm kind of somewhere in the middle because I'm like, yeah, I, I want to believe that, like, absolutely, I can just change my thought right now. Um, but then I think, oh, well there's all this stuff that lies beneath those thoughts that's probably causing it to begin with. I, I'd say um, I come down somewhere in the middle on that, but more toward you can just change it. Um, because, that. yeah, because I, you know, it's often we can't even unearth, even if we go through years of therapy, for example, what the impetus was for having a particular thought pattern, you know, something that happened to us as a child or in our family or whatever. And I, you know, I think by, thinking too much about that, we give it too much power and make ourselves feel powerless to change it. And I, yeah. I don't really think that's the case, but I, I do agree with you in a sense. And I have the same feelings sometimes on particular subjects. You start to feel like, whoa, but for me, this is big. I've come from, you know, I have clients that have come from abusive relationships, abusive families, or I know one person that keeps repeating, I have PTSD and I, I'm constantly trying to get her to tell a new story. Like you have been diagnosed with that, but is that the story you're going to continue to tell? Sure. So uh, my belief is that sometimes there are things that are maybe a little bit thorny for us. And we just, we do keep repeating that pattern. We too, do keep getting stuck on that same negative loop. And in that case, what, once in a while I will say, well, let's, let's try to get to the bottom of this a little bit. Um, not so much as in digging, 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 where did this come from? But how could I change this? Because I don't really believe that's true for me anymore. So I have a couple processes that I use. Um, 
one of them is the the daily tool I write about in my book, and I won't go into a lot of detail, but it involves getting yourself into a better place where you can think about something a little more creatively and differently. Um, another thing I use is something um, I've read about in Abraham Hicks materials we called a focus wheel, where you think about how you currently feel about a situation versus how you'd like to feel about it. And you kind of draw a circle and go around it like a clock and continue to write down new thoughts about the situation that make you feel a little bit better than you felt before. And you start at the, the beginning of the clock and start with number one, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, each one, and keep writing things down that cause you to think about it a little bit differently and that don't throw you off the clock entirely. If you if you write something down and you you go backwards and feel worse, then stop, you know, that wasn't that wasn't a help that wasn't a help not the clock. not the one for you. No, no. So keep going. And by the time, often by the time you get to back to 12 o'clock, you, you've kind of made a little bit of peace with that particular thought. I've used it when I, I, I just remember, you know, this was a, a big example when one of my uh, sons went off to college and I, it was like, it, as, as a parent, it, it can be a really big deal. And I was thinking, I miss him so much. I, you know, how am I going to feel good about this? How am I going to, you know, and all of a sudden I remember doing that focus wheel and thinking about how lucky I was that I had a son that was that got into this great college and that he was uh, enjoying it. He was having a good time. Uh, would I want him living in my basement? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, wow, we can still have, you know, so many happy moments together. And I'm going to be able to see him blossom as an adult and see all the choices he's making. And there are all these things we're going to share. So you start you doing all that. And by the time I took a walk and did that, and by the end of it, it was like, I'm so OK with this now. And I wasn't, you know, 20 minutes ago. So there, you know, uh, that's just one example. But I think we can do that with most topics and don't have to feel like we need to go through many years of therapy or, you know, give so much, so much attention to the negative thoughts that we're actually giving them more power, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. I actually, it's funny to me because I, I love tools and resources that you can actually utilize. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we hear that like, oh, well, here's the thing you can do. But like that's an actual, like that wheel, that's something that you can actually, that's work that you can do, right? You can sit exactly. down for an hour and do that. And I think yes. that that's where we're kind of lost in some of this because it's like it's a, this lofty concept, but there's no action items, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I like that too because um, sometimes just trying to force yourself to sit down and visualize a better outcome, it just fails miserably totally. <laughs> because you, you can't get there uh, from where you are. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a topic that's perhaps hard for a lot of people um, and that what I've uncovered in, in talking with clients or uh, blog posts and people responding to them is, is the subject of money, for example, because it's, it's very concrete, solid, and real. People yep. don't, don't view it as energy so much. They view it as money. Oh my God, I've got to have more money. I've got to have more money. So, and it's really to, just an energy exchange. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I definitely talk to people and I've written a lot of posts about changing underlying beliefs about money, such as people love money, aren't spiritual, or if I have more money, I'm taking money away from other people, which I don't believe at all. I think it's increasing the pie for everyone when you do that. And you're, the money that you're, bringing into yourself, you're putting back out into the world in the form of energy and, and helping other people with that money. So, you know, if you have a so-called block about money like that, or I would call it a self-limiting belief rather than a block. I like that a lot better. Um, you know, you want to change those thoughts, but to sit there and, and think about your bank account going from say having $2,000 in it to having $2 million in it, it's just visualizing that is probably not going to work. Uh, you're just totally. going to be cementing in the fact that you only have two thousand dollars in your bank account, and becoming um, more frustrated as a result of that, right? Exactly, and you're you're not getting anywhere. You're just like kind of pounding that right into place. So, uh, oftentimes, I think what you have to do is think about the feelings that would be generated by having a lot of money, how you think that would make you feel, and finding analogous things that you could think of that are on the same bandwidth as financial abundance. And I've worked with that recently with some people and and I've done it myself and had some amazing results. But just for example, um, I I bring up the money issue because I think that is a stumbling block for lots of people. So um, instead of trying to visualize yourself having a lot of money, uh, think about three times 
that you felt abundant in your life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about money. It could be abundance of friends, abundance of joy, abundance of uh, productivity in your work. But Or when you felt financially abundant, there was a time maybe when some money came in and you, you felt wonderful. And write it down. I'm a big believer in writing because I think it's a very powerful transformational tool. It, it cements things in a lot more and gives you a lot uh, better focus. But you want to... Um, Write down three times when you felt abundant and then write down three times when you felt generous. Now, we would naturally think uh, when we're trying to visualize having more money, you don't automatically go to generosity. But to me, and I think to a lot of people, part of our desire to have money is we want to be more generous and we love the feeling of being generous. And when I did this, I tried this little exercise myself, but that was the easiest thing for me to do. It was like, oh, man, I loved at that time that I you know, um, was able to take my mom out to dinner for her birthday and the time that uh, I bought my daughter this thing that she really needed um, because I could do it. And uh, when we did a crazy family shopping spree once when, you know, business was going so well and everyone bought something, oh, that was so cool. I felt so generous, like such, you know, wonderful yeah. parent and all this. So you go through that. And then the third thing was three times that you felt ease uh, because ease also equates with abundance. So this is another tool. You could sit down and do that and do that for, it could take 15 minutes, but you've created the vibration of abundance without directly trying to visualize having more dollars in your bank account. So those are the kinds of things that I think can really work for people. It's a tool you can actually use. Yes. I love the exercise in particular. Of, um, I have a friend that does like energy healing and she was telling me once about, we we're talking about money and just like lacking abundance, just lack in general. And mm-hmm. she said, you know what? Take a friend to coffee and see nice. how that feels because and and leave that scenario like that's something small that anyone can do today right if you got five bucks you know what I mean right. like take someone out to coffee and feel what that feels like to give and then yes. what that also does is that reminds you that like you have the capacity to give absolutely you, you are rich right because there's people in the world that can't afford a, a coffee I don't right. know stuff like that is like really resonates and I love it um, I love I love that. I, I actually it's so funny that you mentioned that because I was driving through um, there's a Starbucks drive through near me, which I, I love just not having to go into Starbucks when I <laughs> just need the, the caffeine hit. And totally. I thought, you know what, I am just going to buy coffee for the person behind me because that so, just <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. How do you how much do you spend? Because what if they want like a venti latte? Like how, how do you uh, all know? I did is I threw out, I you know, through five dollars to the very cool guys that work at Starbucks who have actually uh, they've made a what did they call it um oh there was a funny name oh puppuccino for my dog <laughs> oh my <laughs> and God, passed it through the back window they're very very nice guys and I knew they would be down for this they they uh, the puppuccino consisted of whipped cream by the way and they passed it through the window to my golden retriever but I knew that they you know I felt like I had a receptive audience and they weren't going to look at me like I was crazy. So um, there are these young guys that are just, you know, they, they're already in the zone. They don't need to be told about law of attraction necessarily. They're, they're living that way. But I, um, I said, you know, um, here's $5. I'm not sure what the person behind me is going to order, but um, please, could you just take care of the order for them and um, say, I'm just paying it forward. And if there's any money left, please keep that as a tip for you guys. And, you know, maybe they're going to order something bigger than that, but, I don't need to worry about whether I put out $3 or $5 or whatever, because I'm, I'm rich. I'm, I really am. So I love the idea of taking someone out for coffee. And I think that's kind of what I had in mind when I did that the other day. I love it. I challenge anyone listening right now to do that today. Just, it'll make your day so much better. I swear. Oh, well it will. And I, there's this one thing that, that I came up with recently and um, it, it was, it was a weird idea at first. I was thinking of, um, Uh, You know, Noah St. John, the author of, uh, I think it's called a book of affirmations instead of affirmations. Yes. I'm familiar with that, actually. Yeah. 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 And it's like asking questions rather than affirming things. And um, that really resonated with me a lot. And I use those, you know, when the mood strikes me as a better way, maybe of getting to something than trying to affirm something I don't yet have sufficient belief and expectation around. But um, I was thinking about that and I thought, Whoa, whoa, I've, I, I like this idea even better, but, you know, I, um, this is my idea, so <laughs> I'm going to love it. But um, I was thinking about it, and I thought the reason affirmations don't work, which, you know, I, I've, I've written scads about this, and a lot of people have talked about it. The reason they don't work sometimes 
is we're affirming something we don't really believe yet. And I think you yes. and I in our, our notes to each other um, talked about that a little bit. Yes. We don't really have the expectation built up and the belief that this is actually going to happen. So, for example, if I'm saying um, I want to lose weight and I want my body to be really fit and I'm affirming I am fit and trim in great physical shape and um I, you know, I weigh 120 pounds. I don't know, you know, whatever your desired weight is. Well, if you don't, if you're not there, if you're like 30 pounds overweight and you're not exercising right now, nothing's happening by affirming that you're, I, to me, I, I really seriously doubt you're getting anywhere with that. I think you're just sort of affirming I'm overweight and I'm disappointed in myself that I haven't been able to lose the 30 yeah, pounds. Like marinating in that feeling. A, exactly. So that energy. What, yeah, what I started thinking about is, you know, what we were talking about a few minutes ago, that every time you put out a request for something to the universe by just thinking about it, the universe goes to work and responds to it immediately. So the reality, the real reality is that you are fit and trim and have lost that 30 pounds. It's already happened. It's out there. Yeah. And you're, you're just the, the what is situation where you're 30 pounds overweight isn't it's sort of an illusion because you could have that 30 pound weight loss and the whole the whole package if you just lined up with it vibrationally so instead of saying the affirmation i'm fit and trim and i've lost 30 pounds the affirmation could be i really really am fit and trim in my real reality i really am fit and trim and look fabulous because that i I believe that. I believe that the vibrational escrow is very real and that it is right there. It is right next to us. It is wait. All it is is waiting for our lining up with it. So I was using this with some clients and a couple of people it resonated with so much. I mean, I'll constantly get a message on Facebook. Yes, I really, really am rich because they, they were to say I'm rich before wasn't working. But to say I really am rich for us, it was a code word that I know in my true reality, my real reality, which is more real than our current circumstances, we really are rich. We really are thin. We really are fit. So I kind of like that as a new way of, I haven't coined a name for that, like affirmations, but I'll have to come up with something. It's like it's that. the school of really. I don't have Totally. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, like, I like that a lot, actually. I think, um, I mean, at the end of the day, it all comes back to energy and the Oprah quote that keeps popping up in my mind that I was mm-hmm. talking about earlier is that. She said this, I don't remember when she said it, but it's stuck with me ever since then. And it's just so profound. She says, you are responsible for the energy that you bring into a room. And I think that that applies to anything that you do in life, right? Every time you show up, um, you're responsible for how you, how you show up and the energy that you bring in. Oh, uh, I like that. I like that a lot because you do have a powerful influence on the people around you. I actually just read recently with just an aside here that, there is someone, I think I saw this on Facebook or some social media, that uh, someone who actually, their job is they go to meetings for a company, they don't say a word, merely to affect the energy in the room. Because, wow, that's yeah, cool. The, yeah, the people in this company apparently recognize that this person brings a great vibe and energy to the room, and that's what they do. And And those of us who are really working at this, we do bring an incredible energy to situations when we cause ourselves to do that. And we can be a powerful influence on the rest of the world. I mean, one person who's vibrating in that, that field of appreciation, even if it's not all the time, none of us can be there all the time. We are putting something out there that is creating that energetic space for other people and helping them to realize their desires. So you're doing great things for yourself and you're helping other people. And that, that's a wonderful feeling. Yes, that's so cool. And you know what? No one can ever again say to me that they don't know what to do with their life or their career because you've just informed us that there is a person out there that sits in meetings and <laughs> brings their energy. So, hey, there's literally something for everyone. Career there like is that. something for everyone. I, 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 I love, love that story. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, now, I discovered you on another podcast that I listened to. And I think there was something that you said on the podcast that really resonated with me. Cool. Um, you actually, and we talked a little bit about this previously, but you went over what at the time was something that it was something about like your daily declaration to the universe or something along those lines. And Oh, maybe I, like note to staff or something. Yeah. And I was telling you that I actually borrowed this and slightly, I altered it slightly to apply it to my life. 
Um, yes. I recite it every single morning. And if it's okay, I want to share what that is. And maybe you can say, you told me that you've kind of altered it yourself since then. Um, a a little I bit. I think it's yeah. really powerful stuff. So yeah, please do. Please do. What I heard you say um, was today I asked the universe to bring me million dollar ideas, help me rendezvous with like-minded people, guide me to thoughts that are in harmony with my core desires. I think maybe I've had a variation of that too. Um, bring me evidence of how all this works in comfortable, humorous, delicious ways, which I love. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the last part I did alter slightly. It's helped me to be aware of my power and to resist the things I know are inherently wrong for me and to pursue with boldness the things which I know to be right. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe your variation of that and what inspired you to come up with that? I just want to say I literally put this into like my mantra every morning and it's amazing. Wow. I'm, I'm really, it makes me feel great to know that you did that. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and I, I still do that. Um, the only, I, a couple of things that, you know, cause this was a while ago that I started doing that and the, way I've tweaked it. And I, I feel like sometimes just tweaking things can be good just to bring more energy to the process because, you know, so that we're not feeling like, um, I don't know, stale or whatever with, you know, putting out, because sometimes I, I bury the statements a little bit or whatever. But yeah. the one thing, I mean, I love the things that you have and, and your tweak on the, the last one that you mentioned. I mean, I think those are awesome. Those ideas, how does, how do any of them not work? I mean, those <laughs> right. are like great foundations for, living the life that you love and, and they would attract all sorts of other things that fall under their umbrella. Um, what I do more now that I wasn't doing as much before is instead, instead of saying, I ask the universe to bring me a million dollar ideas, help me rendezvous with like-minded people is I say, thank you for bringing me million dollar ideas. Thank oh, that's you. That's good. You've already like, yeah. you've already received it. Okay. Yes. Helping me rendezvous with like-minded people. Because it's it's it doesn't it doesn't sound like a big thing, but energetically that's putting out a slightly different vibe on the subject. Don't you agree? Absolutely, yes, hundred percent. So I like that. And um, I, the the last one that you mentioned uh, in the notes that you know what exchanges we've had and talked about things, um, helping me be aware of my power to resist the things that I know are not right for me or inherently wrong for me, and pursue with boldness the things which I know to be right. I like that you know, pursue with boldness idea. I love those. Yeah. I love powerful words like that. And uh, I was thinking about how about uh, thank you, the universe, for the clarity to know the things that are right for me and for helping me to pursue them with boldness. Because yes. clarity is huge. Clarity oh God, is absolutely. power. So absolutely. that was one little tweak on that. And it's it's really nice to hear that you're using those. And I still do that. I do um, a lot of delegating to the universe because I've found it just works. There are, and this is probably one of the, one of the most helpful tools I can think of to tell someone who's going through, perhaps they've got a couple issues in their life that are complicated. And when they think about the, the particular issues or the issue, it's like they can't get their head around it. It's just got too many moving parts. It's like, I just, I actually don't know what to do about this. I, I don't have the answer. And the more you think about it, the more you, you add resistance to the situation. So one thing I've started to do more and more often than I even did then is to say, universe, thank you. Um, these are the things I'm going to do today. And my to-do list has gotten a lot shorter. I try to put on things that I know I can actually get done and that are going to be relatively painless, just a few things that, that I want to do. And then the things that I think are maybe in my mind huge, but I'm viewing them right now as having too many moving parts for me to handle is that I delegate this to you universe and I know that you're handling it for me and thank you. And my to-do list for the universe, I have looked back at some of those, you know, a few months later or even a month later or whatever. And I'll notice not everything on my to-do list is always checked off. But invariably, almost everything on the list for the universe has happened. So, <laughs> so, much. Yeah, it's so it's, wor it's working for us, you know, whether we know it or not. And um, the universe has so much more access to information about those moving parts that we don't know of. And I, what I like to think is happening also is we're constantly getting feedback that will help us perhaps to take one step in the direction of the solution to an issue or a problem 
but all we can do is take one step in that moment. We can't solve the whole thing. It's just, there's too much out there that's going on. So by delegating, not only are we sort of giving the universe permission and, and, you know, say, we know we have free will here, but I, I would, as part of my free will, I'd like to get some help with this universe. You know, that's, I'm down here slogging it out here. So <laughs> thank you for helping me. And it also removes it more from your mental books. So every time the issue comes up for you during the day, you can say, oh, hey, what? Thump yourself in the head. You know, I forgot I've delegated that to the universe. I don't have to think about it. So you, it, it's, it's moving, removing more resistance from your day. Yes, absolutely. Love it. hundred percent. Um, I want to, I know we're running over time and I'm, I'm really respectful of your time. So I apologize. Oh, wow. I didn't even um, realize that it's gone so quickly. I know, right. That it always happens. Trust me. Um, I want, I want to ask you a question. I ask all my, de- my guests, what mm-hmm. is your definition of success and have you achieved it? Okay. The big question. Um, <laughs> my, I, I mean, I really like the question. My definition of success would be to be happy, to be one of those people who has figured out how this all works and be using it to live a big life, the life I was intended to live, and helping others to do the same. I love that. Uh, my, my last question is what do you hope will be your legacy? And I feel like you've touched upon that a little bit, but is there anything you maybe want to elaborate on with that? Um, as far as my legacy, I mean, I, obviously my, my inner circle, my, my people are important to me. So I I would love to think I've been a great parent and a great sister and a great daughter. And also that I've figured out how to, how to exercise the incredible freedom I've been given, I'd like to know that I figured out who I really am and helped others to do the same, because I think that's what's what I love about your uh, your idea for thinking outside the lines here. It couldn't be coming at a more powerful time in our world because there's there's a lot. We're getting a lot of uh, feedback through the news and whatever of, of a lot of kind of scary and crazy things going on out there. And it's easy to feel like, oh, God, our world's in big trouble. And um, I don't want to think about it that way, because I think there are so many millions more positive things happening every day than the negative, And we just don't hear about them. Yes. And I, and I actually think more people are becoming aware that we create our reality with our own thoughts. And the more that that happens, we're going to have fewer and fewer people out there that are feeling powerless and disenfranchised and doing the kinds of things that are scary and, and go against our kind of core values as human beings. So, um, just to be to continue to think outside the lines and help people to do the same, I would love to be remembered for that. You just perfectly articulated my miss my mission and my message. Oh, so thank you so oh, much. That's amazing. Oh, that's nice to hear. <laughs> nice to hear. Um, Susan, I want to thank you so much for chatting with me today. Tell us where and how we can connect with you on the web. Sure. Um, I have a website, uh, www.howtoallow h o w t o a l l o w dot net. That happens to be the name of my book, but um, there, there's all sorts of ways to contact me on my site. Whether it's just to find out more information about the book, or to find out about coaching, or I have a just myriad blog posts there that um, I think can be helpful to people that are trying to get information on working through particular issues. So uh, that would be the the main site I would suggest going to. I mean, I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, How to Allow, but um, that, that's another way to communicate with me if you'd like. Awesome. And your book is fantastic. I highly recommend it to everyone listening. Oh, um, thank you. So again, nice to hear that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. I, like I said, so appreciative of your time. And I think that people are really going to get some value out of our conversation today. So I really hope so. And I, I thank you so much for um, having me as a guest. I'm really honored to be on your, your show. I love the concept. All right. I want to thank Susan so much for being on the show today and for sharing her valuable insight with us. She's actually agreed to come back on the show and take a deeper dive into some of the law of attraction principles, which I'm really excited about. So look for her again in an upcoming episode. I want to thank you for listening today. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Please head over to iTunes and be sure to subscribe. And while you're there, I'd appreciate it if you'd please share your thoughts with a quick review. Now you can find the links for everything we talked about in this episode in the show notes, which are available at thinkoutsidethelines.com slash podcast. Until next time, go out there and do what makes you happy. And remember, the best way to predict the future is to create it. For more information, please visit thinkoutsidethelines.com.